many a road that I walk down with you. Many a trail I followed you for my law too. This ain't a road that I know how to do. Girl, you're gonna have to take this one alone. Welcome, everybody. This is Barry Chauvin. I'm coming at you from Digital Sakale Studios with Pershing Wells. We're here for session two of the Songwriters uh, interview series. Um, I'm really happy to uh, welcome today to the studio, studio my good friend, Mr. Tommy Ike Haley. Welcome, Tommy. Well, thanks, Barry. I appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. Uh, Tommy's uh, here all the way from Ponchatoula, Louisiana, and uh, we've met up at different songwriter events. And uh, I really like his songs. And uh, so I've asked him into the studio today to, so we could get to know him. So tell me, when, when, not that you're not a spring chicken anymore, but <laughs> when, when did you start writing? I'm not a spring chicken anymore. Right. But when I started writing songs, probably when I was in high school, actually before I learned to play the guitar. So I would, oh, really? I would write lyrics and come up with tunes in my head. But it's not That's something cool. I was ever taught to do. My right. mother wrote songs from back when she was in high school, and she wrote songs throughout her life, still writes songs, um, but she never really sat us down and taught us how to do music or taught us how to write songs. Um, just several of her children. My older brother is one of them. I have a couple of younger brothers that write songs. It's just something that so we do. It's kind of in the blood, it in is. the genes. Um, and so what, what prompts you to write a song? Is it life events? Is it... Uh, What's going on in your songwriter mind that says, oh, i got to get this out? Well, a lot of times it's not, I don't decide to write a song. It's just something, that it, it, it may be a life event. It may be something I see that someone else is going through. Right. If they're going through some difficulties. Um, I was in Baton Rouge once, and I was down on Florida Boulevard, and I saw this homeless guy. And just the interaction with him brought about a song that I wrote called I'm Getting Better. Oh, but, okay. Um, and, uh, but... Things that people say. I've written, written several songs about sayings from my grandparents. Uh, Man Alive from Man my Alive, grandfather. Man Alive, that's my favorite. And uh, If You Think About an Angel from my yeah. grandmother. Right. And so when you write, when you sit down and write, is it one session and you just crank it out? Is it a lot of sessions? You stretch that out over how long a period of time? It depends on the song. Some songs come out really quickly. Man Alive came out just very quickly. Uh, and then there was another song that I wrote about Easter called On the Third Day that came about as a result of a conversation that my son Thomas and I had when I was taking him to school that morning. And uh, I told him everything changed on the third day as we were talking about the significance of Easter. Oh, wow. And okay. I went home right then. I wrote that song that morning. All right. Uh, Man Alive was written over the course of a, of a morning. But sometimes, I mean, I wrote one song. I had the, I, the, the idea in my head. It's called John and Elizabeth, or True Love Never Dies. And I had this, uh, this English ballad medieval story weaving in and out of, of murder and suicide and things like that. Okay. And so I had the story framed up in my mind. I had the beginning of it and I had the end of it and had parts of the middle. But I, I'd written part of it. And like I do with a lot of songs, I have fragments. And if they don't come pretty immediately, I put them in a notebook. Right. And save them, and that one took me 20 years to finish. There you go. <laughs> See, you can't rush it. And part of it is because I, I write a lot of sad songs, and so my lovely bride says, you can't just play sad songs, or I'll think there's something wrong with our relationship. You have to write a happy song for every sad song. Right. And so what I'll do, if I write a sad song, I'll, I'll dig down into the notebook right. and say, okay, let me pull something, something happy out of here. That's right. That's, that's great. Um, so you're going to uh, do one of your songs today, uh, for this show, and you want to tell us about it, how it came to be, and what it's about, and all that? Sure. I, I think I'd like to do, if you think about an angel. Okay. My grandmother on the Haley side was, she was a just a little bitty lady, only about four foot eleven, so I'm Whoa. a little over a foot taller than, yeah. than she was. But she was the sweetest lady you'd ever meet, and the wisest lady, and just so full of love. You, you, you never walked in where she wasn't smiling. Right. And when I, when I would come in to see her, and whether it had been a few days or whether it had been a few months or, or whatever, depending on if I'd been gone, and uh, but she would just she would just perk up and smile, and she would say, "If you think about an angel, you'll see the glisten of its wings." That's great. That's great. All right. Well, great. And uh, let's hear it. Okay. Here we go. All right. I 
I remember as a young child I'd go to my papa's farm Granny's face would light up She'd wrap me in her arms She'd say I knew you were coming Just as sure as anything Cause if you think about an angel You'll see the glisten of its wings If you think about an angel If you think about an angel If you think about an angel You'll see the sun of its wings Whenever times were happy Whenever times got rough I always knew the comfort Of my granny's love And I love to go and see her And to hear her sweet voice sing If you think about an angel You'll see the glisten of its wings If you think about an angel think about an angel, if you think about an angel, you'll see the glisten of its wings. When I grew up, I moved away and finally settled down. I'd take my wife and son to see her, and we'd go back to my hometown. As we walked up to the gate, she'd call out from the front porch swing. If you think about an angel, you'll see the glisten of its wings. If you think about an angel, if you think about an angel, if you think about an angel, you'll see the glisten of its wings. Granny passed away at 96 years of age. She's gone to be with Papa and those from bygone days. When I feel a soft breeze blow or hear a bob white sing, I think about that angel and see the glisten of her wings. When I think about that angel, when I think about that angel, when I think about that angel, I see the glisten of her wings. Cause if you think about an angel, if you think about an angel, if you think about an angel, you'll see the glisten of its wings. Well, thanks, Tommy. That, that's an awesome song. I really enjoyed that. Well, thank you, Barry. I appreciate it. And thanks for inviting me to come. This yeah, is a great show you yeah. got. Yeah, this is session two. So uh, we want to uh, welcome everybody to come back for session three. We don't yet know who's the next artist, but uh, let me know who you would like to see on this on this show, and we'll reach out to them. So uh, with that said, Tommy's going to play a little bit more of his songs on the way out, and uh, we'll roll the credits. All right. Thanks, Barry. Thank you, man. Angel. If you think about an angel, you'll see the glisten of its wings. Whenever times were happy, whenever times got rough, I always knew the comfort of my granny's love. And I love to go and see her and to hear her sweet voice sing. If you think about an angel, you'll see the glisten of its wings. If you think about an angel, if you think about an angel, if you think about an angel, you'll see the glisten of its wings.